Um, I want to talk a little bit about the migrant numbers falling sharply. Claire used to work at the Home Office uh, for the then Immigration Minister, Caroline Noakes. And I just wonder uh, what you make of the fact that there does seem to have been a policy on immigration that's actually worked, uh, given that not that the Conservatives are actually going to get any credit for it, but we've seen a, a, about a third drop in the number of people coming in. Claire, what do you make of this? Yeah, I mean, it will be taken as uh, some kind of success for Rishi Sunak in the, the dying days of his parliament. And I think that Keir Starmer will be the net beneficiary of that and will take any of the credit coming. But I think what we need to understand is what are the implications of this? What are going to be the long term effects? People want to reduce numbers, but if you're only going to solely look at something on a, a set of numbers and not on industries, then I think we are setting ourselves up for some real problems. Health and social care visas are down by an enormous amount due to the fact that um, applicants wouldn't be allowed to bring in uh, spouses or family members to support them. So naturally, they have gone elsewhere. What effect is that going to have on health and social care when we have enormous vacancy numbers at the moment? 130,000. Exactly. So what are we going to do about that? And I'm all for training up uh, our own people to, to go out there and do these jobs, but it's not quick. Uh, are they actually able to do that? So, I mean, it's quite a profession. The caring profession takes some real dedication. I certainly couldn't do it. I don't have that kind of capacity to be able to, to care for people in their own homes or in hospital or at end of life. It's a very specialised area. So I think that we have to be careful by saying, well, you can just get anybody that's unemployed to do it. That really demeans that kind of oh, it job. It totally demeans it. And it's not, I hate when people call it unskilled because it absolutely isn't. You need lots and lots of skills uh, to, to be a care worker. I mean, the people who looked after my grandmother have mentioned this before yeah. but they're they're really they're really excellent people who have a lot of skills that I don't have and a lot of do a lot of things that I couldn't do well I, I could I, I might be able to be forced to do them but I wouldn't choose to um Mike I wonder whether this drop in immigration is something we can be happy about not happy about what do you think I mean, we're just looking at raw numbers today. A drop, you know, as it says on the the, the information below, from 143,000 down to 91,000. Some of that, I would imagine, is to do with Afghans, is to do with Ukrainians, is to do with people from Hong Kong. Though, though I don't know that, but obviously, when it's clear, it says huge drop in health and social care. Then 82 percent. And there are other sectors, many other sectors in our economy that are desperate, that, that have labour shortage. And I know that through the work that I do, I speak to employers regularly who say, I am desperate to get both skilled and unskilled people into uh, my business so that we all, my charity or, or my public sector, place of whether a hospital or social care institution, simply so that we can function. Of course, we advertise to British people. British people do not apply, or if they do it in some cases, or if they do apply, they don't stay in the job very long. That's particularly the case in social care, because as Claire says, it's very hard work and it's not paid very well. If the government want people to go into social care, they need to make sure that it's a better place to work as and it's paid more and it's a better st and standard of living for people who go and work in it. So at the moment, lots of people today are celebrating this huge fall in the numbers. I'm sitting here thinking, I speak to employers, speak to people in the public sector all the time, but we're desperate to get people in to come and do work that needs to get done, simply in some cases so that our society can function, so people are taken care of in hospital or taken care of in a social care setting, or also so that businesses can run. On the one hand, we've got the government saying, look, we want to get growth up, well, great, and we all want that. You can't do that without people of working age. The bigger picture, of course, is what an ageing population, as in what more... Uh, and also a lot of people who can work but don't. That's a, that's a major, major thing, which Labour, in fairness to uh, the new uh, Work and Pensions Secretary, uh, have uh, Liz Kendall, have said they want to reform that dramatically. Of course, but as Claire said, you can't train up a social care worker or a doctor or a nurse or a surgeon or, you know, somebody to do with your ears, your eyes, whatever it is, in a short yeah, space of time. That's a fair point. Or to be to upscale our own population. Nobody would argue with that. And indeed, the last government did nowhere near enough of that. It's good that the current government has set out that they're going to do that. You cannot do it overnight. In the meantime, you need people to come and do it. And my, my fear today is that we've cut our fire and nose to spite our face, quite frankly. Okay, well.